Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. If this is your first time here, welcome. And if it's not your first time here, thanks for coming back. So today, we're gonna do a little trip down memory lane. I'm gonna go back, reflecting over the year, and talk about the new brands that I tried this year. And will I continue to purchase from them? Did I not love the things that I got from them? I wanna give you my thoughts, let you know the 19 new brands that I tried this year. If you do enjoy this video while you're watching it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you aren't already subscribed to my channel, I would definitely love it if you would consider subscribing before you leave. So I actually made a video at the very beginning of this year and let's just talk about that for a second. I feel like this year, I discovered so many new brands, so many new creators. I feel like I'm a different person from earlier this year in terms of makeup. I mean, actually in terms of life too, but that's getting too deep. I feel like I really discovered indie brands this year. I really hadn't tried indie brands previously to this year, so they've changed the game for me. Like I am an indie brand girl, ride or die, like, yes. So anyway, I made a video at the beginning of the year talking about brands I wanted to try in 2022. So let's go over the brands. I had eight brands that I wanted to try. Let me tell you if I tried them or not and go from there. So the brands I said I wanted to try were Odin's Eye, Kaleidos, Cinti Grace, Flower Beauty, BH Cosmetics, Kimchi Chic, Rose Ink, and LYS Beauty. I know Flower Beauty and BH Cosmetics I had tried before this year, but I had only tried a very limited amount of things, like maybe one thing from the brand. And so I wanted to try more from the brand. Basically was what I was saying with that. I did try Odin's Eye. Did I try Odin's Eye? <laughs> Uh, I basically bought everything that they have in their line. Well, that's not true. My first, you know, this is, this is a good question to go back. My first purchase, I believe, from Odin's Eye this year was the Hella Palette. It came out in the beginning of this year. So I believe this was the very first thing I tried from Odin's Eye. And spoiler alert, it's, it's in my top two. It's in my top two favorite Odin's Eye palettes. I am obsessed with this. I remember trying this and thinking the quality was unreal. The mattes, pigmented and blendable. The shimmers, gorgeous. I just love this color story. I think she did an amazing job. I've talked about it a million times, but this was my first kind of dip into Odin's Eye. And then I bought a mystery box and I received a few more palettes as well as some lip products. The lip products, honestly, I ended up decluttering. I got a bullet lipstick and a lip stain, but they were in like a bold color that I just, I really wasn't gonna use. Oh, and the Red Dragon palette. Maybe I bought these at the same time or around the same time. These are my top two. These are my top two. This Red Dragon palette, I remember seeing this, the Legendary Diversa collection and wanting all three, but particularly this one because I really am a neutral girl, but this neutral palette is just something else. It's just like bumped up a notch. Love it. The packaging, the artwork on all of these palettes is also unbelievable. And then, like I said, I got a mystery box. I got three more palettes, the Verdandi palette, the Alva palette, and the Norns palette. Norns palette, I like, it's not my favorite. I know a lot of people absolutely love it. I don't love, 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 love the color story, but that's the Norns palette, the Verdani palette. Again, I don't love, love, love this color story, but it's, it's a good palette. And then the Alva palette, I love this color story. I think it's really gorgeous. Again, it's more of like a pinky, mauve neutral palette, really stunning. I just think everything they do, packaging, there's so much thought in all these indie brands. There's so much thought that goes on into producing these products. It's so, so obvious. And then I picked up the Solmon 2 collection. I picked up the palette and I also picked up a couple of blushes and a highlight from the collection, all of which were wonderful. The blushes and highlights are so gorgeous, the packaging. And then I also picked up their Christmas palette. So listen, I obviously went crazy. I went crazy for Odin's Eye. Will I continue to purchase from them? Is the Pope Catholic? Yes. So that's that. I'm gonna have a hell of a time putting all of these things back. You guys have no idea how much stuff I have next to me. So Kaleidos. 
I happened to win a giveaway from Bad to the Brow, Millie here on YouTube, and she was giving away the Blend Bunny Blends palette. And in that package, she actually included one of the Kaleidos highlighters. This is the Space Age Highlighter in Ray Rider, which is just at my alley, just this champagne, absolutely beautiful, very blingy highlight but still not colorful. It's still wet looking. I don't know. It's a really beautiful highlight. Honestly, is the only product I've tried from Kaleidos this year. Regrettably, I mean, I want to try their eyeshadows, but I wasn't really super interested in the quads that they came out with. If they do come out with bigger palettes this year, I'm definitely interested in checking the brand out. Uh, I know they came out with multi-chrome eyeliners. Not really a super interest of mine, but if they come out with, like I just said, a, a palette that is bigger than a quad, I would definitely, definitely be interested in picking it up. Sydney Gray. So I was so lucky to receive this as a gift from Renee. Thank you so much, Renee. This is the Tiny Marvels palette from Mel Thompson and Sydney Grace. Obviously this did not come out this year, but I just tried it this year. I am so glad I got to try this palette. The color story is absolutely beautiful. Quality of these shadows is insane. The mattes are very blendable. The shimmers are just like that. I don't want to say traditional shimmer because they're not basic, but they are just that smooth, not super textured, not super sparkly, but just smooth, wet looking, gorgeous metallics. I think they really did something with this palette. I'm so happy that I got to play with this palette this year. So I'm absolutely on the lookout for what Sydney Grace comes out with next year because I've been fully impressed with this palette. And then Flower Beauty and BH Cosmetics. I uh, actually didn't bring anything over with me, but I can kind of just give you an idea. For Flower Beauty, at the beginning of this year, I actually did a full face of Flower Beauty. I can link that down below if you're interested in checking that out, where I tested out a full face, right? Obviously, I just said that. <laughs> Some of my favorite things from the brand are their powder blushes, the Flower Pots blushes. Such good, good blushes, drugstore or not. They're smooth, blendable. They have so many beautiful colors. They are a matte blush, but they're not flat or powdery. They just give a beautiful look to the skin. Really love their powder blushes. I also bought one of their moisturizing lipsticks, which I absolutely love. So yeah, I really enjoyed Flower Beauty. I think they're a great drugstore brand. Oh, and the Desert Lights palette that like, chromey, almost like creamy metallic, all metallic palette. Yes, so good. I did try one of their eyeshadow palettes that was mattes and shimmers and I didn't like it. So anyway, it's kind of hit or miss, but I find that with most drugstore brands, that's the case. And then BH Cosmetics, I actually, I don't know if it was after or before I filmed the video where I was talking about the brands I wanted to try. I bought a whole bunch of palettes from BH Cosmetics website. So I have a lot that I've used. I actually have some that I haven't used. Still, one of my favorite ones that I've tried this year was the one of the ones from the Say It collection. I always forget what it's called. I think it's called Loki Love You, where it's like a warm tone palette. The quality of those shadows is so good. If you had put it in different packaging and told me it was from a high end brand, I would believe you. So, love their eyeshadows. I'm gonna continue to see what they come out with next year, considering they've been bought by Makeup Revolution. I'm really kind of waiting to see what happens with them next year. Okay, and then LYS. I remember in that video, I was talking about how I wanted to try the LYS foundation. I'm so glad I didn't pick it up because I don't think I would like it, especially where I'm at now. Like from, I would say about May through the rest of the year, my skin became extremely oily, extremely acne prone. And from what I've heard about their foundation, it's very hydrating, kind of heavy. It's just not what I'm going for right now. So I'm glad I skipped out on that. The only thing I tried from LYS this year were their cream blushes, which I love, I love. So I have this one in the shade Classy. I have this one in the shade Kindness. They're pretty close in tone, but I have a type. I love a warm tone cheek. I really like these blushes. They're cream blushes, but they're not super emollient. They're not greasy looking. They're not tacky. They do dry down to a satin matte formula, which is what they're advertised as, which I think is accurate. The packaging is really beautiful. There's a lot of product in here. And for uh, Sephora, these are under $20. They're a good price point. I actually did have a third one that I decluttered because 
they sent me the wrong shade accidentally and I ended up just not really using it. So I kept these two. Uh, I would be interested in more from the brand. It's not a brand that I'm like dying to try things from. If it was something I was interested in, I would consider picking it up. So the two brands on the list that I did not try were Kimchi Chic and Rose Ink. Uh, I kind of forgot all about Rose Ink completely. Like where have they been this year? Have they done anything this year noteworthy? I know they came out with like cream bronzers, cream highlighters that look like toilet seats. I remember that. But other than that, there was nothing that like stuck out to me, appealed to me. I completely forgot about them if I'm gonna be honest with you. And then Kimchi Chic, again, I don't really feel like there were any releases from the brand that called to me. I feel like all their eyeshadow palettes looked really just not good. Although I did go on their website the other day. They have so many products. I am considering doing like a full face of Kimchi Chic. They have foundation, they have concealer, they have, they have everything. I didn't realize how much they had. So if that's something you guys would be interested in seeing, let me know. Or if you've tried things from Kimchi Chic, let me know your recommendations on what I should try. Okay, so those are the ones that I said I wanted to try that I tried or didn't try. And now I have a million other ones that I didn't even say or really think about trying <laughs> until I bought stuff from them. And again, I think a lot of these brands actually came out this year or some, I should say some of the brands came out this year. So I'm gonna go in alphabetical order and we're gonna start with About Face and AF94. We might as well just group those together because they are owned by the same brand. About Face is the more like mid-price brand. AF94 is the drugstore version of About Face. So About Face, I did try two things from the brand. This is one of my favorite things I've tried all year. Their lip pencil. Actually, I have more stuff. See, I knew this was gonna happen. Hold on. A few moments later. Some of my favorite things I tried this year in general were the About Face lip liners. I think they're so good. They are so creamy, like almost too creamy, almost like it's hard to control, but they last forever. I'm telling you, they last on the lips for a really long time through eating, through drinking. They're still there. And the one that I'm wearing on my lips today, which is the one that is my favorite, is the shade Cradled. It is just like this rosy nude, a little deeper nude. I love it, I love it. If they come out with more nude shades, I definitely would be interested in picking them up. I did also pick up this shade called Love Like a Sunset, which is this bright like orange because I picked up the liquid lipstick and I wanted to get a corresponding lip liner. The liquid lipstick is in the shade Canyon on Fire. It is just this bright, fiery orange. I loved wearing this in the summertime. My only thing, it, it, it smells minty, which is nice. Look at that, it's opaque. It's such a unique color and I love, <sighs> got it on my sleeve. I love the packaging on this. I think it's so, so super cute. I really like this color. The only thing is it is a true matte liquid lipstick. It does dry down completely and it is drying. I do find it to be a bit drying. So, you know, it's not the most comfortable liquid lipstick. I don't really plan on picking up more shades in it, but the lip liners, yes, I love. And then the last thing I got is the About Face Cheek Freak Blush Balm in the shade Raunchy. It is actually what I'm wearing on my cheeks today. I've heard a lot of people say they don't like this product, but I actually really like it a lot. I think it's so stunning. I think it's very easy to apply. I love this color and I feel like it's really pretty. I don't feel like it's too tacky or sticky, but it does give a nice dew to the cheek. I like the packaging. I actually really like this product. I feel like I'm the only person who likes it, but that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. And then AF94, I tried two products from the brand. I tried their Playdate Multi-Use Cheek and Lip Color. This is in the shade Saver, which is a little bit more of like a brownie orange compared to the About Face one. Stunning. Now this one is very, very, very buildable. It's very lightly pigmented. So I do have to really work it up to get the pigmentation that I personally like. And usually with these lip and cheek tints, I don't really like to wear them on the lips, but this one on the lips, I actually really like. It's very comfortable. The color is gorgeous. So I really enjoy this stick. I think it's nice. And then I also bought their lip gloss, Give Em Lip High Shine Lip Gloss in the shade Honey I'm Home. Just this beautiful nude lip gloss. I like it, it's nice. It's definitely a, a, more of a thicker gloss, not sticky, but coat your lips really nicely. My only thing is I wish that this had a scent. I love when lip glosses and lip products have scent, but 
particularly lip glosses. It doesn't have any scent at all whatsoever. So that's my only, my only gripe with it, but it's a good lip gloss, especially for the drugstore. This is gonna be a long video, you guys. I hope you have like water or a snack. Okay, next uh, brand I wanna talk about is Adept Cosmetics. So I do have two, I do have two palettes from Adept. First one that I bought was the Heather Austin palette because Heather Austin here on YouTube, she's one of my favorite creators. And when I saw that she was launching a palette with Adept, I was like, yeah, I'm there, sign me up. The shimmers are insane. These are the sparkliest, most multidimensional, creamiest, most impactful shimmers I've ever used. I think they're stunning. The mattes are really nice too. I really like this palette. And after my experience with this palette, I ended up picking up one of their other palettes, which is the Amunette. This is the light version. I like this palette a lot too. I actually prefer the Heather Austin one, to be honest with you, but this one is really nice as well. The shimmers in here have different textures where I feel like all of the shimmers in the Heather Austin palette in terms of formula are the same generally. I feel like some of these are that really creamy emollient sparkly formula. Some of them aren't. And the mattes in this are good. They're not my favorite mattes in the world, but I do really like this palette. Really love the brand. Would I consider buying more from the brand? Absolutely. I just, I prefer to have a palette that has at least a 50-50 splat, splat? <laughs> at least a 50-50 split mattes to shimmers, or if not, I prefer more mattes to shimmers. And so traditionally with Adept palettes, they're really shimmer heavy. So um, yeah. Of course, I'm gonna keep my eye out for the brand because I absolutely have loved these two palettes. I would definitely want to pick up more from the brand. All right, the next brand that I want to talk about is Blend Bunny. This is another brand that I literally went crazy for and bought every single launch that they had this year. Well, every eyeshadow palette launch. So the first one that I received in the giveaway that I told you guys I won from Bad to the Brow was the Blends palette. This is an all matte rainbow palette. And I remember winning this and thinking, I'm not really gonna get a lot of use out of this. I've used this so much this year. I basically keep this in my top drawer of my desk. Anytime I'm missing a matte shade, anytime I need a matte white, a matte black, a transition shade, a color that's missing in a palette, I pull this out. And the matte formula for Blend Bunny is so good. It's one of my favorite matte formulas. It's really, really nice. So after that, they released the Dollhouse palette. So I picked up the Dollhouse palette. She's calling this a, a colorful palette for the neutral lover and a neutral palette for the colorful lover. It's more on the cool tone side. It's really beautiful. The shimmers in this, I, I kind of was like, oh, they're nice. I like them. Not my favorite shimmers, but the mattes, love. And then I ended up picking up the Surge palette as well. This one's more of like a neon, and like a grungy palette. The shimmers in this, I don't love. The mattes are great. And then she launched the Primal palette. Really enjoy the Primal palette. It's kind of an extension to the Blends palette in terms of the mattes and more shimmers. And then they've got these two big black and white pans. And then her latest release was the All Done Up palette, which is more of the neutral palette, a little more condensed. I love this size of palette. I think it's really, really good. The shimmers in this are super sparkly. I'm gonna honestly, anytime she launches a palette, I'm buying it. That's kind of where I'm at. <laughs> it's kind of where I'm at with Odin's Eye too. I'm just so addicted to these brands now. I just love everything they come out with. And then the last thing I did pick up from Blend Money was some of her lashes. The beginning of the year, she launched lashes, uh, the Virtues and the Vices, two different lines. The Vices were supposed to be more dramatic and the Virtues were a little more subdued. These, the Virtue ones are still very dramatic lashes. So if you've been here before, you know I teach ballroom dancing. And if you're new here, hi, I teach ballroom dancing. And I go to competition and I love wearing these lashes for competition because they're dramatic, but they're not like hard to apply. They're not super heavy on the eyes. These ones in particular are in the shade Wings and they just flare out at the end. But again, I've worn them so many times this year, they still hold up just beautifully. So really enjoy those. I have quite a few of these Virtues lashes. These are the only ones that I've used because these are the ones I reach for when I want a very dramatic lash. So um, yeah, I'm gonna continue to buy from Blend Money. Yeah. 
The next brand is BK Beauty. I did recently just get a PR package from them with their core brush line. I was so excited and so thankful. The brushes are beautiful. They're extremely soft. They're so nice. They're still pretty new to me, so I don't have like a full on review review of like which ones are my absolute favorites, but I've been really enjoying, especially the eye brushes. I've been reaching for them a lot and I'm really excited to continue to use them. And I think I am gonna pick up a couple more things from the brand, uh, like their Angie Hot and Flashy line. That concealer brush, I really wanna try that. And every time I talk about BK Beauty on here, I get a lot of comments telling me that you also love their brushes. So they're a fan favorite and I can see why. Kind of the unsung hero, in my opinion, of this year was Cosmic Brushes and this Serenity palette. I've talked about this palette now on my channel quite a lot. I think you guys understand how I feel about it. It's gorgeous. These mattes are crazy good. They're so pigmented, yet blendable. I'm just gonna start saying PYB. The shimmers in here are gorgeous. This color story is beautiful to look at. It's not like my ultimate favorite color story in the world, but I've created some gorgeous looks I'm absolutely on the lookout to see what their next launch may be next year. And I have a question for you. If you've tried their palette prior to this, is it the same quality, the rose something? I mean, that color story is a little more up my alley. I would be interested in trying it out if it is the same like formula as this. Let me know if that is the case, if you have tried it before. Uh, the next brand is Gourmand Girls. This I did actually get in PR. I did put this in one of my new makeup releases videos that it was something I was interested in checking out and they saw my video and asked if they could send it to me. I'm so glad they did. Uh, first of all, I love a spooky theme. Halloween is my favorite holiday. Yes, it is. I absolutely love the theme, the packaging, and then the inside, the color story is just gorgeous. The shimmers in this are insane. They're textured, they're multi-dimensional. The mattes are also really good. Fully have enjoyed this palette. I'm really excited to see what the brand comes out with next. Definitely a brand that I will continue to purchase things from if I don't receive them in PR. I would buy the things myself, but this palette in particular, I'm just like, I get all the, the Halloween spooky feels. You know what I mean? Absolutely glad I tried this brand this year. Okay, another brand that is really on my radar, I kind of really vibe with their marketing, with their aesthetic is Give Beauty. I've only tried two things from the brand, okay? One thing I liked, one thing I didn't like. So I did try their matte lipstick. This is in the shade Lovable Me. This is the original me matte lipstick. Packaging is super cute. I was a huge No Doubt fan when I was growing up. Huge. I remember in high school, junior high school, high school, I had a No Doubt poster on my wall. I loved Gwen Stefani. So I do like that it's Gwen Stefani. I mean, I'm not gonna buy things just cause it's her, but yeah. So this shade is so unique in my collection. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous, that's not a word. It's just a gorgeous brown nude. I don't know, I love it. Formula is great. It glides on the lips very easily. It doesn't feel drying. It's nice, I like it. I did also try the lip gloss, which has already been decluttered from my collection. I thought it was very sticky, very, very sticky. And the applicator didn't really pick up a lot of product. So it was really hard to spread over my lips. But this brand is a brand that's definitely on my radar. Definitely I wanna try more things if there's something that appeals to me, I would be interested in picking it up. Okay, and then Kylob is the next brand. I was super intrigued by this brand. They are a indie brand that does palettes and collections based on art. So this is the Impressionism palette. This is one of my favorite palettes I tried this year. It is so gorgeous. I love this bright, colorful, fun color story. And the formula is really, really nice. Their mattes are very silky and their shimmers are a traditional metallic, very smooth very flattering for mature eyelids, really gorgeous. I found myself wanting to reach for this palette so much that I had to kind of stop myself from using it. And then I picked up the Van Gogh palette. I actually have only used this once, so I don't have a ton of opinion on it, but this is what it looks like. And then on the inside, it is just like this grungy, deep, dark, wintry color story. It's really gorgeous. So very excited that I bought these items from Kylov and I'm definitely anticipating to see what they come out with. Although I'm wondering something's going on because all of their palettes have been on like giant major sale for a long time now. I hope they're not shutting down. I'm a little worried. 
definitely a brand I would continue to purchase from. So a brand I was definitely not even in, remotely interested in trying was Makeup Revolution. <laughs> but I tried their Ultra Cream Bronzer. I only picked this up maybe a month ago, maybe a month and a half ago, and I absolutely love it. I have the shade Light. It is what I'm wearing on my face today. It is creamy and emollient, extremely easy to blend out. Quite pigmented though, so just be careful. Absolutely love it, it's stunning. I was really close to picking up the Clueless collection that they did. I didn't pick it up. I'm kind of glad I didn't because I saw not great reviews on it, but I'm interested to see because they bought BH Cosmetics, are they gonna adopt the formulas from BH Cosmetics? Because that would be amazing. I would really love that. Because I feel like some of the collections that they come out with, some of the items are quite cute. They do a good job. Some of the things they come out with, I'm just like, what? But some of the things that come out with, I, I would be interested in. My only reservation is I don't wanna pick it up and have wasted my money because the quality is crap. You know what I mean? So I've got my eye out for them. I'm not dying to buy things from them, but I've got my eye out for them next year. Another brand, I can't believe I only tried them this year. It's kind of weird to me to think like I did, is Nomad. I went crazy for them. I went crazy for them. I fell head over heels for them. I love them. The first palette that I picked up was the Haunted Europe palette. I love it. Again, the spooky theme just got me. I love this holographic packaging. The color story inside is just, I love it. It's spooky, it's dark, it's grungy. And then I went on to buy every release they had, except for the Paradise Islands palette. I did not pick that one up just because the color story didn't really call to me. And so I knew I wasn't gonna get a lot of use out of it, but I did pick up the Whistler Snow Lodge palette, the super just like wintry dream. I also did pick up the Monteverdi Cloud Forest palette. The quality on this one is unbelievable. It's so, so good, both the mattes and the shimmers. I then went on to pick up the Fets de Provence. Stunning, stunning color story. I remember when I saw this color story, I was like, wow. Wow. And then the Hudson Valley palette has my heart. Color story is right up my alley. The fall leaves get me homesick for New England. Really love this one. Love this one a lot. And then their newest palette is the Santa's Village palette, which I really like as well. The shimmers are very toppery. They're pretty hard pressed. They're not quite the same formula as the other palettes, but still really like this one a lot. So I am absolutely gonna purchase anything they come out with. I love the brand. I think they do such a good job with the theming, quality, everything is great. All right, and then the next brand is One Size. So this was a brand that kind of wasn't really super on my radar, but I did pick up a couple of things from the brand, one of which has been like my holy grail product this year, their translucent powder. I am very oily. So this powder, it saves my skin. It saves my makeup. It makes my makeup last all day. Now, if you are dry and you want a barely there powder, this is probably not the powder for you. It's quite thick, it's quite heavy, but if you are very oily like me and you live and or you live somewhere where it's very humid, this is really gonna lock your makeup into place and make it stay. I also like the fact that it doesn't really change the color of my concealer or my foundation. It keeps it pretty true to color. I love the packaging. It's been a really good powder and I've used it a lot this year. And then I also picked up the Turn Out The Base BBB Cream. I have mine in the shade Medium 1N. This is an okay foundation. It's not my favorite. It's quite thick and I don't think it looks the most flattering on my skin, but with oily skin, it does stay put very nicely. It doesn't break up, it doesn't get greasy. It's pretty long wearing and it gives a medium coverage. I do like to wear this when I'm filming, uh, but I feel like in real life, it does look a little makeup-y. But other than that, it's a good product. This is a brand that I, again, I have my eye on and if they come out with things that I'm interested in, I would definitely be willing to pick it up. Okay, so the next brand is Rock and Roll Beauty. They just launched this year and their first collection that they came out with was the Jimi Hendrix collection. And I'm a big Jimi Hendrix fan. So I was super interested in checking it out more as like a skeptic. I was like, is this a joke? Is it a cash grab? Is this gonna be crap quality? Like what's the story with this brand? And so I picked up a lot of things from the collection, not everything, but a lot of things from the collection. Their collections are ginormous. They include things like nail stickers, candles. So I really picked up just the makeup products. I did declutter some of the things that I wasn't using, but some of the things that I kept, 
uh, the eyeshadow palette one of the eyeshadow palettes. I think they came out with three with the collection, but this is the Purple Haze palette. I actually really like this palette. I thought it was pretty good. I had very low expectations, if I'm gonna be honest with you. I feel like the mattes in this have a similar formula to the Kylov mattes where they're very silky. They're not powdery. They don't have a lot of kick up. They are buildable, so they're not like super duper duper pigmented, but I think that's nice for a cool tone purple palette because it can look like a bruised eye real quick. And I feel like it's easy to control how much pigment you place. The shimmers in this aren't like the most impactful shimmers. They are a little bit more on the soft side, but you know, overall, I thought this palette was quite nice. It swatches terribly. It swatches terribly, but the performance on the eyes, I think was really nice. And especially my expectations being low, it surpassed my expectations. The other thing I really liked from the collection was the Bold is Love Blush and Highlighter Palette. Now for me with a light skin tone, I'm not gonna get a ton of use of all of these products, but I like that this is going to cater more towards a medium to deep skin tone, which a lot of times with one color of a blush and highlighter palette, that's not usually the case that I've seen. The thing that I actually really did like using this was on my eyes. I created really nice eye looks with this palette and I was able to also carry it down onto my cheeks. So I thought the quality of this was really, really nice. Also in the collection, there was a couple of lip kits and I picked up one. It came with a liquid lipstick and a lip liner. I decluttered the lip liner because I just didn't like the tone of it. And I thought it was kind of weird that the lip liner was lighter than the liquid lipstick. Typically, I like it to be either the same shade or the lip liner to be slightly deeper than the lipstick, but. But this was in the shade Mellow. This is the liquid lipstick I'm wearing on my lips. I think it's actually a really beautiful color. It is a little on the drying side, so I have to just apply it sparingly, but the color of this is so beautiful with like a brown lip liner. Mm -mm -mm, I love it. And then the last thing from the collection that I really kept around was one of the brushes. It came with a brush set, or it didn't come with a brush set. I bought a brush set that came with a couple face brushes, a couple eye brushes. This brush, it doesn't have a name on it. I have been using this whenever I wanna do a matte inner corner highlight. It literally fits into the inner socket of my deep set eye so perfectly. Boom, 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 you're done. That's what I've been using this for. It's just fluffy enough, but it's not too fluffy. It's really a really good brush. Everything else, they did release two more collections this year, I believe like the Def Leppard collection and Aussie. And I think they just released Twisted Sister, so three more. I really wasn't interested um, in it. I was, you know, looking to see if, if I was gonna be interested, I would be willing to pick up the products because I don't think they're bad quality, at least the ones I've tried, but the, they just didn't interest me. The products, like the color story of the eyeshadow palettes didn't interest me. The other products that they released didn't interest me, so I just didn't pick anything up. But again, I think if they released a collection that did interest me, I would be willing to pick it up because I do trust that it's not gonna be absolute crap quality, hopefully, if it's the same quality that I tried. I can't believe that I tried Unearthly Cosmetics for the first time this year. To me, it's insane because I own so many products from them. <laughs> They've become one of my favorite brands. Uh, as soon as I discovered them, I just bought everything. I'm not kidding. I have so many of their eyeshadow palettes, but in particular, the ones that I've used, because I have some I haven't even used yet. Hmm, love that. Fall Magic. Um, absolutely stunning. This palette I think is my favorite of them all. The shimmers in this are so wet looking, sparkly, gorgeous. The mattes are gorgeous. The color story is gorgeous. My close second favorite is the leather and lace palette. I love that it's a neutral, half neutral, half colorful palette. Stunning quality, great, very matte heavy. Lore was my first palette I purchased from them. This one is deep and dark and dramatic. I loved wearing this when I was going to competition. And then the Sleepover palette, this one came out this year. This is more of like a pink berry color story. Really nice. In the Dark, this was a re-released -re palette. This did come out for holiday last year, but they re-released it with a new shimmer shade. I really like this one as well. I also bought some of their matte liquid lipsticks. They're good, they're nice. They dry down to a matte finish, so if you don't like that, you wouldn't like these. And I do also think that the colors end up a little darker 
on the lips than they do in the tube. The Incandescence Highlighter, their serum highlighter, one of my favorite things I tried this year. I think it's gorgeous. It's sparkly, but it has a translucent base. So it really kind of sinks into the skin. It doesn't look stripy. Really enjoyed that. I bought a couple of their blushes from the Sleepover Collection, as well as a couple of their single blushes and single highlight. Really love these blushes. Very blendable, very smooth. Love this orangey type of color, both of these. Really nice. I also bought their mystery box and I actually just bought their Valentine's Day mystery box. It went live today. And I'm very excited because I was very impressed with the presentation of that mystery box. It was basically a PR box with an entire collection in it, all packaged beautifully. Some got three liquid lipsticks, three quads, and a highlighter palette. Really impressed. This brand is one of my favorite brands. Yes, I will continue to buy from them, of course. And then the last brand I'm gonna talk about is What's Up Beauty. So I did receive this palette in PR. This is the Geodes palette. The shimmers in this are really, really gorgeous really sparkly, really beautiful. Oh God, really beautiful. <laughs> Little messy. That pinky swatch is terrible, but you know, go with it. And I do like that the mattes in here are neutral mattes. Love this palette. I've been enjoying it. They also sent me their nail polishes that go with the collection. So there are some polishes that match the shades in here, both the mattes and the shimmers. I think they did a really good job with that. I've gotten a lot of use out of the polishes. All right. If you are still here, thank you so much. I so appreciate you. These are all the new brands that I tried in 2022. Let me know your thoughts down below. Did you try any of these brands for the first time this year as well? Are these brands that are on your radar of brands that you haven't tried that you wanna try? Let me know your thoughts down below and give me any recommendations of anything that I didn't try from these brands. I would love to know your thoughts. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me out a lot when you do that. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would love if you would consider subscribing to my channel before you leave. I do upload videos weekly, both beauty and fashion videos, and I would love to see you back on my channel again. I wanna thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.